Flexible deburring tools are great for dealing with irregularly shaped castings. Here we're using a drill mill for chamfering. It has flutes on the side like an end mill. This allows you to machine right into the corner for a perfect blend. Here we have our logo being generated using digital sheet forming. Normally, molds would have to be created for a stamping press to create a sheet metal part like you see here. This is all new technology. It's pretty awesome. If you've ever needed to create threads on a slender component like you see here, a die holder attachment could make life a lot easier. Establishing a hole in the side of a part like you see here can be extremely difficult without the right tools. A flat bottom drill is one of the best options, and circular interpolation is one step better. If you've ever needed to hold round or oddly shaped parts on a mill, a clamp like you see here is a great option. Lathe chucks work great too, but they're a lot more expensive and they can't hold odd shaped parts as well. Here's a neat trick for cleaning oil stones. You can use WD-40 and cardboard to get the stone looking like new again. Just don't try this on a water stone. The only thing that should be used on a water stone is water. One of the most common mistakes I see is not feeding hard enough. What we want to do is feed hard enough that we break the chips into small pieces that can be evacuated by the hydraulic pressure that's created by using through spindle coolant. We're using air here just so you can see what's going on while drilling. Here we're going to use this block to orient features 180 degrees out from each other without the need for a fourth axis. The part is rolled and indicated to ensure that each face is parallel to one another. This could be done with as many faces as required. This could be done with a y-axis lathe or a fourth axis on a mill, but we try to show you ways that anyone can use. 